I also stream games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chrisware. <sighs> so as I upload my gameplay footage of Among Us to PeerTube, because that is of course the game everyone's playing these days, I thought now's a good enough time for me to have a chat with you guys about my experience with Zubuntu. I've been on this distribution now for about three days, uh, which is substantially longer than the time I gave Ubuntu before giving it a, uh, a first impressions review. Um, but I think, you know, now's as good a time as any. And the distribution, this is of course uh, 2010, was quite recently released. And substantially all of my criticisms of the Ubuntu desktop release have sort of disappeared now uh, I've switched to the XFCE desktop. I, I think that every single one of the shortcomings, and not that there were many, like Ubuntu 2010 is a really good distribution, uh, have sort of melted away. Um, and maybe part of that is because XFCE is the desktop environment I'm just most comfortable with, most familiar with. I feel at home, I already know how to do everything, and I was kind of going out on a limb giving the GNOME desktop a shot. But I think at the end of the day, the desktop design for the Ubuntu desktop team and the desktop design for the GNOME desktop team are a little bit at odds with each other, and I do still kind of reserve that that I think that you ch uh, that um, Ubuntu would definitely get the most w would should basically look to Mate as their flagship desktop um, environment. I, you know, I, I don't know, you know, the behind the scenes factors that go into making that decision and all of that. But, you know, you look back at uh, the, the older versions of Ubuntu when it did have the GNOME desktop and it really sort of shone out um, above all the other Linux distributions for a substantial time there. Whereas, and if I'm completely honest now, most Linux distributions, you can do every anything that you want to do with them. Like, the, the difference between one distribution and another is really just a matter of personal preference, maybe a little, you know, question of philosophy and politics. But at the end of the day, you know, what I usually do when I choose a Linux distribution is I write down a list of things that I need to do, a list of essential applications, which distribution can I do this relatively easily with. I usually end up with a pretty long list of distributions that I can do, and Ubuntu usually makes it onto that list. So uh, I've been playing around with XFCE. Um, I've got the uh, the desktop uh, thing here because I was looking at it at the desktop wallpapers. I got to admit, I got to admit, they have some nice sort of blue and purple ones here. You could have a few more photographic ones. I don't know if that so has something to do with keeping the the uh, the f file size of the ISO down. I suspect it is, but you know, some of these pictures that's kind of you know they're quite nice, but you know, I don't know. Some of these these more abstracted ones, you know, I, I, it'd be nice if they used a greater range of color, perhaps. But uh, and I didn't. I don't see a groovy gorilla. I don't see a groovy gorilla. So you know, point away for that one. I'm afraid. Uh, I, I suppose it is the case, though, with these interim distributions, ones that are not the long term support ones. They are perhaps. In some ways they can be less interesting, sometimes they can be more interesting, because a lot of times when Ubuntu makes a big change, they will roll it through their desktop, uh, roll it through in an interim release so they can perfect it for the next long-term support release. Uh, XFCE hasn't changed in over 10 years, and I like that. And a lot of people who use XFCE like that as well. Uh, it has been refined a little bit, the Ubuntu desktop has, has been refined a little bit, as you can see, if you've installed Ubuntu out of the box, um, it's largely what you've got here, except that that taskbar is at the top for some reason. It's fine at the top, but if you're going to have a single taskbar that functions very similar to a Windows 95 era taskbar, why not just have it? I don't, I don't get it. Don't get it. Don't understand it. Don't need to. It's fine. XFCE is wonderfully customizable. It also came with background icons that were more integrated with the overall system. Um, you know, so arguably a reason why XFCE might have been a you know a, a possible choice for the flagship uh, Ubuntu desktop um, you know XFCE I think you know like Manjaro make great use of it MX Linux make great use of it uh, I haven't seen the Fedora XFCE but I suspect I will probably want to see what that's all about as well XFCE just a solid desktop environment lightweight and it works really well with OBS for window capture as well so uh, just for all the all of my personal boxes, and you know, maybe I'm a bit of a, you know, s stick in the mud when it comes to I find something that I like, I'm willing to stick with it. I like a lot of things that the GNOME Desktop try, 
I applaud their courage and um and, and I applaud the, their their innovation there. Um but I, I I think, you know, this is one of those cases where if you like traditional desktop paradigms, XFCE will suit you down to the ground. I love the whisker menu, it's fast. I like the categorizations. I like that you've got favorites there. Um, I like that what you can do, and I have done in the past, is rather than set up my list of favorites, I just go into uh, properties here. Then I go into, I believe it's behavior. And then I display the recently used applications by default. So that way, the last 15 or so applications that I use, they're just there in the menu as I open them up. Also, one of the things that I wish Ubuntu did, and it doesn't do, and I, I think it would... It's a small small change to make, but I think it would it would make a lot of difference. Linux Mint do this; they have a great XFCE implementation too. Honestly, I think I think Linux Mint should definitely go with XFCE as their flagship um, d uh, desktop environment as well. But they run cin they make cinnamon, so that ain't going to happen. Anyway, is uh, I've got the Windows key here, the Meta key, the Super key, whatever you want to call it. I push it, menu comes up. Then I can just do if I wanted to, example, run Firefox. I don't even have to type Firefox, I just type Fire and it's right at the top there. Great. Wonderful. So, you know, in many ways, if you're into that functionality of the GNOME desktop where you just want to push the super key and type OBS, boom, you're there. It's fast. Uh, it's, it's you know, it ticks all of those boxes. It's got a nice, you know, it's got the system tray, very customizable. Although one thing I will say, and uh, this has only really become apparent to me moving people over to the XFCE desktop, right, is... I like the, you may have noticed that I am running a rather beautiful dark theme here. This looks beautiful, right? In order to change the theme, you have to go to Appearance. You have to select Greybird, Greybird Dark. Lovely looking themes, works great out of the box, right? Uh, it comes with Numix out of the box as well, that's pretty cool. Uh, icons, you've got to choose an icon that suits the dark theme. Comes with a decent enough selection of icons, not as many as, for example, Linux Mint, but then again, to be honest, if you've just got a few good themes that work consistently across applications, that's all you need, and they do have that here, so well done on Ubuntu. Fonts, I don't usually bother changing, right? So you've got style, which is the, uh, the buttons, and you've got the icons and the fonts, right? But then, in order to change the, the, the border around the windows, you have to go to Window Manager. A lot of people who are moving over to Linux for the first time or aren't really interested in getting to know the nomenclature of the, you know, of XFCE, basically, will not necessarily immediately intuitively go to Window Manager. I've moved over someone to an XFCE desktop who's used to Windows. They adopted everything almost immediately. XFCE is a lot more intuitive than people give it credit for because XFCE is seen as a desktop environment used by people that are quite into Linux, but it it's very, very, very... Um, easy to bring someone over across to XFC, but one of the things they did get stuck on is how do I change the, the borders, the stuff that goes on the outside? You've got to go to Window Manager. It's a small thing, and it's it's the shortest thing in the world um, to explain to someone, and, it's, and if someone's willing to sit down and work their way through it, no problem either. Um, but yeah, like it's it's just something that is not immediately intuitive, and maybe they could put Window Manager together with Appearance, I guess, maybe, or or they could at least put the style of Window Manager into Appearance. Tiniest thing, rather inconsequential, doesn't really affect anything. Um, startup sessions and things like that, you know, like th this is a great settings panel. Uh, Thunar is a great. Um, file manager that's what it comes up with it's very standard very basic but uh, that's what you need like you just need something to move files around and, and open stuff and all that kind of business that's great um you know it's not this is it's not it's not hugely exciting i my user experience is fundamentally the same as it was when i was using zubuntu um 2004 wonderful experience did everything that i needed to do um, it's just newer versions of software packages. That's really all it's come down to. A great distribution and a great iteration of a great distribution. However, however, there is a small however. It applies to all Linux distributions, and that is, I've mentioned it in the last video, um, Ubuntu leaning further into snaps. 
Um, that can be problematic for a number of reasons, um, but I do understand why Snaps exists. Snaps exists so that you can have uh, newer versions of software on LTS releases of, of Ubuntu. That makes a ton of sense in the world. Love it. Great idea. Definitely go for it. However, it does centralize software repositories. So it means if, for example, with DigitalOcean, they have a mirror copy of, for example, Ubuntu to use on their droplets, they can't mirror the Snap archive. They can't mirror the Snap repository. So that can be kind of a problem when it comes to disseminating the software in the way that you would expect of something free and open sourcey. Like the Snap Store is not a repository, really, it is a an app store. Um, and replacing stuff from the repository almost piecemeal and putting it into a, a store, um, it seems like a very slow gravitation towards um, an, a, a sort of a more Androidy Windows Store type of way. Like it is the commercial, the commercialization of um, a Linux distribution, the corporatization of it. And we understand that fundamentally Canonical is a company. It has to make money. The purpose of a company is to generate a profit for its shareholders. Can't begrudge Canonical for that. Can't begrudge Red Hat for that. Can't begrudge, uh, well, IBM, I guess, for that, you know, when it comes to that. You know, you can't begrudge that. And that is why there is a distinction between something like between a uh, community-made distribution like Debian, like Linux Mint, or a corporate-made distribution like Ubuntu, like Fedora Red Hat. So the distinction is there politically and philosophically, as well as practically as well. And if you just want the best Linux distribution, uh, the one that is most pragmatically the best, the best tool for the job, regardless of your philosophy, regardless of anything like that, the Ubuntu distributions with the desktop of your personal choice you'll, will probably get you there. Um, but many people do have uh, some issues with Snaps, not necessarily because the back end is, is proprietary, which it is. Um, I, as I understand, the front end is not. The front end is open source. But I do believe that um, also the centralization of so much software being controlled by one for-profit company can be... Uh, you know, th th there are, I you know, ideologies that, that would crit would critique that. But that is up for you. That's for you folks at home to make up your mind with. Um, you know, and I, I, I sort of stand somewhere in a, in, a, in a, like, well, maybe that's a video for another day, but there are pros and cons to, to various different approaches. However, one thing I think I did make a mistake on in the last video is, for example, if I take OBS Studio and open this up into a, uh, into the into the software store here, so it has all this. Uh, the Snap Store, by the way, I don't know if you're uh, if I mentioned this in the last video. The Snap version of OBS comes with a whole bunch of plugins that are actually kind of cool and gives you a lot more options. So, and you know, you know, if you're on Manjaro or Arch or Fedora or anything like that, I believe that Snaps are pretty good now uh, cross platform. So you know, why not give it a go? It's a great out of the box experience. Um, you can choose different versions. So I, I can choose the Flathub version, I can choose the version from the Deb uh, repository as well. I believe I can also choose the Snap version. Uh, I might have to search for it here. I saw a flash up there for a moment. The store search can has been a little bit slow for me, not to the point where it's uh, hugely inconvenient in any way. It's just like, you know, you wait a couple of seconds. Um, so here we go. Right, so I just searched OBS uh, source so I can get it from Flathub because I did add Flathub in. And actually what's great about the Ubuntu repositories is that Flathub is in the Ubuntu repositories, but also the package that allows you to integrate the Flathub... Um, or to, 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 sorry, Flatpak is available in the Ubuntu repositories. You can just install that, sudo apt Flatpak. Flatpaks then will work from the command line. And then you can add in, I forget the package name specifically, but if you go to the Flatpak website, it'll tell you. And you can add in, um, in the Ubuntu repositories, there is the package that integrates the Flatpak infrastructure into the software center. So you've so this software store, this, this GUI here, has uh, Flatpaks, Snaps, and the Ubuntu repository. And as illustrated here, I can choose the Flatpak version of OBS Studio, I can choose the Snap Store version, um, and I can also choose the uh, one in the Ubuntu repositories. Now, whether or not a couple of versions of Ubuntu down the line, we're gonna start seeing the um, OBS not be included in Ubuntu's native repositories. You know, that remains to be seen, but I, I gotta admit, it does feel like 
there is this gravitation towards you know the the centralized app store app store um but again you know uh, when it comes to practicality it might be more practical for more people uh, it might make things easier it might make systems a bit more bulletproof and you know you, you can't argue that those are things uh, that, that make linux more attractive to a lot more people so like i say the benefit the beauty of open source is that we get given choices for these things and the thing i like about the linux and open source community is that we do think about these choices and we make them uh, seriously and and yes we do have some rather heated arguments from time to time it's because we're passionate about the software we use the infrastructure that we support and and how the world around us is built and that's by and large a good thing providing it just doesn't get too out of hand right um one thing that i did notice was ominously missing from the ubuntu uh, software center was sync thing gtk now sync thing was included um but not the the little um uh, app down here in the bottom that allows me to sync all of my uh, files usually if I'm completely honest thumbnails and uh, bits and pieces like that for doing the videos uh, across all my devices uh, so that I can work on them when I'm not at this workstation here um, I did have to bring that in from from flat, flat packs and I kind of feel that's something of an oversight like sync thing dash gtk I'm sure was available in uh, 2004 and for some reason was removed maybe i don't i for, for for reasons i i'm completely not privy to um but it was available in the flat hub repository uh via flat pack so i installed it and i did have to set it specifically to start up on boot myself which was a little bit of a i say it was like a little bit of a tiny bit of an inconvenience like i knew how to do it it took me it took me two minutes someone who's new to linux wouldn't be familiar with the command line or wouldn't be familiar with how linux systems work or, or how xfc works would have struggled with that but i don't know what well, you know if you have if you have a basic knowledge of how a linux system is put together you could probably w work that out quite easily or, or find someone to help you um uh but yeah other than that uh the chromium web browser does come uh from the snap store not from the repositories removing it from the repositories was I think um, a decision wrongly made, if I'm honest, and it, I may share the skepticism of the Linux Mint team, thinking that this is, uh, a, shall we say, a widely used package uh, being placed into the Snap Store to encourage people to, uh, you know, to, to usher people towards the uh, to, to usher people towards the Snap Store. But I don't know. Maybe that's just the cynic in me. Um, and it's like I say, I'm not anti Snaps outright. But when a system starts relying so heavily on them, and like I say, Ubuntu doesn't, but I see it trending in this direction. I think it's going to be such a slow gravitational shift that all of the criticism of it will be so evenly dissipated and softened that, you know, it can be successfully corporatized. And generally speaking, that's quite an effective strategy that companies employ, if I'm completely honest. You know, there's always app images. I'm a big fan of them. Anyway which is actually um yeah you yeah, know that's the thing um xfce terminal grand old terminal love it um you i you know i still haven't settled on a background distribution maybe it should be a photograph that i've taken that looks quite nice i do i do like the abstract ones but they're all blue and purple um Qt apps look kind of fine. I don't think they look fully integrated with. Uh, I've got a Qt app here, KeyPast key XC. Um, yeah, the theme is actually done by the application here itself, as a lot of Qt applications are doing nowadays. I think that's a good thing. Um, it looks all right. It integrates well enough, but it's it's using its own theme there. I don't tend to use too many Qt apps um, unless I'm in a Qt environment. And you know, there we go. Um, but yeah, all things considered, this is a wonderful distribution. Um, and I uh, will probably continue to use it. I've had no real problems with it whatsoever. Uh, it looks nice. I love the dark theme. Um, uh, a mark taken away for not having any, any gro groovy gorilla wallpaper. Um, just going to put that one out there. But um, yeah, and I just want to take this moment to offer uh, my uh unrestrained gratitude to the ubuntu desktop team for all of the 
immeasurable hard work that goes into these projects um, and that, that do benefit the Linux community as a whole. Um, and, um, and, and I thoroughly enjoy using them and you know, using the, uh, the, the Ubuntu desktop products. And, um, and thank you very much for everyone who has contributed in any way, shape or form. I'm incredibly grateful. Also, one thing before I do go, and it is important, very important, Shapes, an open source base building game inspired by Factorio, has been ported because it is an open source game to the Snap Store by a friend of the channel, Alan Pope. Thank you, Alan. Amazing game. Love it so much. Glad to see that it is in the Snap Store. Um, yeah, and it's also available on Steam and Itch. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful, it's an open source game. I absolutely am massively addicted to it um and i'm only up to like level 20 on it as well so you know see if you can beat that uh, definitely i mean i'm not even just saying that as any kind of you know like the this is not a sponsor or nothing like that i'm literally just like saying this game is really good like go out and try it. it's available for free in the snap store or you can buy it on itch or steam for like it's like a fiver or something like that it's like it's crazy cheap um and also the soundtrack which is amazing as well available on bandcamp so check that out. Uh, you can just go to shapes with the yeah, shapes s h a p e z dot i o. I've done a video on my gaming channel, so uh, check that out. Um, I should live stream it sometime. Twitch TV slash Chrisware. Um, because this is amazing. So you know, thank you Tobias Springer for an amazing game there. Thank you to Alan Pope, otherwise known as Popey, uh, for. Uh, for bringing it into the Snap Store is wonderful. Go and try it out. Um, I absolutely love it. Zubuntu, great distribution. Honestly, I say this with no hesitation whatsoever. Could easily be the Ubuntu flagship desktop. So could Mate as well. I see what they're doing with GNOME, and I do see that it does. You know, I do see that there are many ways it makes sense to have GNOME as the flagship desktop, and it looks really good. Like it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Um, and I know that all the work's gone into it now, so. You know, it's just my opinion. No one cares about my opinion, really. It's not that important. My opinion is not important. Disclaimer should that should go at the beginning of the video, really, shouldn't it? Um, but honestly, uh, yeah, it's it's just like Ubuntu's hit a really good stride now, in my opinion, uh, in terms of practicality and and usability and just general pleasant to useness. Um, so not a very exciting review. It's just a good distribution has released a good version of said distribution. Um, but thank you guys very much for for joining me, um, and I'll um, you know see you in another video. But yeah, don't forget to check out. I do have a gaming channel, and I do stream on Twitch. I'm probably streaming quite a lot on Twitch these days because uh, Wales, where I live, has gone under a two week lockdown. So you know, what else am I going to do in the evenings? Can't see the misses, damn it. So you know. <laughs> anyway, all right, I've I've jabbered on long enough. But thank you guys very much for watching. It's a pleasure as always. Um, also, if you do want to support my content, I do have a Lib Libra Pay uh, account. It's not necessary, but you can like subscribe for like one one pence a week or something small like that. Um, because all that stuff adds up. Like I know that when it comes to like things like Patreon, my content isn't worth a dollar a month, especially if you're on minimum wage or something like that. As use you know, and when I when I got into open source stuff in in, in the beginning, it was because I couldn't afford software. So uh, anyway, I kind of like Libra Pay. It's open source, and you just throw like literally, you know, pennies. Uh, which is great. Plenty of good open source projects on there as well. I should do a video on LibraPay. It's really good. So, you know, don't bother with any of the Patreon nonsense. Open source will provide. LibraPay is pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's, I think there's someone that is like donating eight, eight pence a week to me on there now at the moment. I appreciate that. Thank you, person. It's an it's a anonymous donation platform. So I don't know who it is, but the person who's giving me eight pence a week, I appreciate it. It's good. Like, you know, it matters. It makes it, you know, like it's, it's like because, you know, okay, you know, it, it ain't it ain't enough for me to to throw away the shackles of employment and run off into freedom. But you know what? It's a it's a meaningful generation, uh, a meaning, a meaningful expression of of uh, thanks and gratitude towards me, which I actually sort of internalize quite sincerely. And thank you very much for just this, you know, for the for the spirit of it. So thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And um, yeah, so anyway, I, I said I'd end this video like five, ten minutes ago. So, you yeah, know, goodbye. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> I'm also on Mastodon. Stop self promoting, Chris. All right, goodbye. Toodaloo.
Oh. <laughs> uh oh. Um. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> damn it! Oh, double damn it! If you'd like to support the content on this channel, I have a LibraPay account. It's like Patreon, but open source.